Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. If you've never seen me before, hello, nice to meet you. My name is Sarah. I make content about like college, pre-nursing type videos right now, but, um, but my overall channel is to document my nursing journey. Right now, I am a pre-nursing student and I'm taking a bunch of like courses that most people would take as like prerequisites for a nursing program. Um, so I'm taking right now um, for the fall semester, Anatomy and Physiology 1, Anatomy and Physiology 2, um, a literature class, and then an introduction to statistics. So very like pre-nursing type things. Um, and then for the spring semester, I'll be taking microbiology with lab and uh, pathophysiology. And then I'm also taking like introduction to healthcare coordination and ethics for the healthcare professional, which I'm very excited about. But um, right now I'm in the middle of my fall semester. Um, I'm taking condensed versions of anatomy and physiology, and I am about to finish anatomy and physiology one. Um, and I'm gonna show you the strategies of how I got an A in anatomy and physiology. Um, like I think oh, I <laughs> probably needed this type of video when I was preparing to take it and while I was taking it. Um, so I'm making this for you guys to help um, share tips of how to stay motivated, how to do well in the class, that sort of thing. Just some background, um, I took um, anatomy online. Um, it still follows, you know, the content that I would need to learn for a more like traditional class, like an in-person class. I still had labs, I still have practicals, I still had proctored exams. All that sort of stuff um had quizzes homework like everything so you know while my format that i took for the class was like a, probably different than yours i think the information still applies so if i'm looking down i have the notes on my ipad so i'm gonna literally break down like everything that i did for the class um everything that i did to get an a um so for right now um the class technically isn't over yet today is wednesday october Fifth, the class technically ends tomorrow. Um, I have a t I have a practical and two tests that I still need to take. However, um, I have a hundred in the class right now. It's mathematically impossible for me to get below an A. Even if I get zeros on all these tests, I will still end up with like a ninety-three. Um, I doubt I'll, I'll I doubt that I'll get zeros, so I'm probably gonna end up like a ninety-eight percent in the class. Um, so yeah, just wanted to put that out there that, you know, I I did really well. So I'm gonna share what I did with you guys. So um, the first thing that I think would be really helpful to keep in mind um, is how much time you're gonna be spending on this class. Like if you wanna do well, you're probably gonna need to spend a little bit more time on this class than you're used to with other classes. Um, and what I mean by this is, just as an example, for my literature class, my statistics class, I spend maybe an hour per week doing assignments, reviewing, like that sort of thing. With anatomy and physiology, I easily spend at least 20 hours a week. And I'm not kidding, like sometimes more. <laughs> um, and if I'm spending less than 20 hours, it's because I procrastinate it and I need to do a lot of work in a very short amount of time. I don't recommend doing that just because while it would make sense from like a productivity standpoint to spend as little time as possible. Um, anatomy is one of those classes, at least for me, um, you really need to take your time understanding everything and memorizing everything, especially when it comes to learning the bones and muscles. Like that unit was no joke. Um, so yeah, that's my first tip is just go into the class expecting to spend a lot of time studying. Um, something that I did was I would use a planner. I have my planner over there. Um, I'd use a planner and I would map out when I'm doing what in that class. So, you know, I could, I took a condensed course, so I would have several chapters in my textbook and, you know, the corresponding assignments due in one week, which sucked so bad. Um, so I would, you know, to keep myself from getting overwhelmed, also to keep myself motivated, I would write down like, okay, I'm going to be reviewing this chapter on this day, I'm going to do this quiz on this day, whatever. Um, something else that really helped me stay motivated was joining a study group. Um, since my class was online, 
we did like a class discord which was really helpful because it was basically like you could just turn it off when you wanted to like it wasn't like something that we kept going off on your phone um so yeah joining some sort of study group will keep yourself motivated because you'll be able to connect with your classmates you'll also be able to ask questions um so i really found that 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 helpful for me for doing really well because also um, i do recommend taking your own notes in addition to whatever lecture slides your professor gives you the reason why is because i found that it really helps me retain information than just reading the powerpoint slides passively if i was like actively making connections i was more likely to be able to retain that so it was like less studying that I actually had to do when I was preparing for exams. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, going along with that, if you are able to write your notes in a way that almost like could explain the concept to other people, you're golden. <laughs> um, so for example, like, I don't know, like the muscular system, right? If you were able to explain like the contractile properties of a muscle cell, but you know, in like note form, it's a lot easier for you to remember that on a test than just cold memorizing everything from your like PowerPoint slides. So I wrote my own notes. Um, and then also I would tell my study group that I would share my notes by a certain day. So it kept me on a schedule. <laughs> like it kept me like accountable. Um, so yeah, sharing my notes was super helpful for me because not only did it force me to actually like do the work in a certain time frame, but it also made me like kind of have to write my notes like neatly so I could actually read them later on when I went to study for the test and write them in such a way that I would be able to teach myself and teach other people concepts. So I understood things really well. Um, so when like test questions were worded, my test questions were just, uh, no. Um, there was a lot of test questions that involved a like, critical thinking and not just strict memorization. So the people that strictly memorized weren't able to actually understand anything. So those critical thinking questions would just like destroy them. So that's why I really highly recommend understanding the concepts behind, you know, whatever you're studying and not just like memorizing facts. Although you do need to memorize things as well. It's just, you also need to understand the concepts like behind it. Hope that makes sense. Um, so something else that I did to get an A was I gathered information from other resources. And I did this with my T's test as well, which is why I think I did so well. Um, if I just relied off of my professor's lectures, I think I probably would have gotten like just a B. I think I would have only gotten a B. Um, and the reason why is because while the professor's lectures are informative, I don't think that at least in my experience, they fully bring you along to actually like understand the mechanisms of anatomy and physiology. So like I would read my textbook as well, which was time consuming, um, but it really paid off. So if you're looking to get an A, I highly, <laughs> sorry, if you're looking to get an A, I highly recommend, you know, not only obviously going to class, attending lectures, but also trying to get information from other resources. If you don't have time to read your textbook, I would recommend looking up like YouTube videos, like anatomy and physiology crash course videos, or, you know, maybe other professors might post their lectures online somewhere, literally anything. Um, I don't recommend just relying on your professor's lectures to get you through um, because, you know, you, this is part of like the piece where you need to like actually understand and not just memorize. Um, if you have information from other sources, you're probably more likely to make the connections in your brain. So you retain information easier. So that's my advice on that. Um, also, I mean, hopefully this is obvious. Do your best to not cram for exams. Um, in my case, I was almost forced to just because of how fast paced, um, the class was, but in a more traditional class where you have, you know, like a 16 week semester for anatomy one. I would do your best to review at least once or twice a week. This way you keep the information fresh in your brain. 
you know, you, this gives you also time to really take a step back and be like, wait, do I actually understand this? Or am I just like glazing over the information? Um, and going along with this, when it's time to study for a test, this is exactly what I did that got me an A. So my, this is my process. I wouldn't rewatch my lecture videos. I wouldn't reread the textbook. This is what I would do. I would reread my notes that I took, like my own notes, and then I would flip through the textbook and I'm, I'm assuming most textbooks do this. They will have like, before you go on or reading comprehension type questions at the end of each section, do those. Um, it, you know, instead of just reading through notes, answering those questions of the textbook, even if they're just like short answered questions and your textbook probably has answers. So, you know, or if you really aren't sure of an answer, like that's the time to ask someone. Um, so I'll show you what I mean. I'll just flip to like a random part in my textbook. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Where did it Where is it? Okay, so like this, for example, this is just a random page from like my the census chapter in my textbook. See, I'll, it'll have like a little like before you, oh, I dropped the wrong thing. It'll have like a little like before you go on. Um, so if I was sitting for my test and I didn't know, for example, the difference between the lingual papula and a taste bud and which is visible to the naked eye, um, that's something that I would know I, I would need to like really review more in depth when I was getting ready for my test. And I would just literally do those for each chapter that I was tested on. Um, also, at the end of your chapter, you most likely will have some sort of like study guide or test questions or, you know, not test questions, but questions that like test your knowledge of that chapter. For my textbook, it looks like this. So, you know, it says assess your learning outcomes and I would just go through each of those. And then my textbook also had like little multiple choice and short answer questions at the end of each chapter. And I would do those. Even if the exact questions or topics aren't on my actual test, I know for a fact that if I'm able to answer these, I at least understand it with the way the textbook is explaining it and I'm able to understand the general topic. Um, you know, your, my, your professor might ask certain questions that were set in lecture, but if you attended lecture, you're probably gonna, you know, get those questions on a test. Um, so that really, 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 really helped me. Um, so that, what else? Oh, okay, so that was my process for studying for tests. For studying for practicals, that's a little bit more in depth. So for practicals, that was like a lab thing. Um, labs were pretty straightforward for my school. So I don't really have any advice on how to get an A in lab other than do everything properly. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully lab isn't too difficult for you. Um, it, yeah, lab was pretty straightforward. So like pretty much everyone got an A as long as they actually like did the lab and did it properly. Um, but the practicals, I would find um, diagrams like blank diagrams and then I would label them myself and just keep going, keep relabeling until I was able to get everything 100% correct. Um, but also I wouldn't review, I wouldn't rely on just one view of something, you know, if it's like this, you know, the skull, right? I wouldn't just rely on an anterior view. I would do a posterior view, right? I would do a cross section and see if I can, you know, look up and identify things that way because for my practical it wasn't too bad it was just a lot of information that they would test us on at once I had two practicals so one was the integumentary system cytology histology general anatomical terms and regions body cavities and skeletal bones you know, like the skeleton so that's like a lot of information. If you can think about everything that that is, that's a lot. So that's what I did to study. I would just go through what I needed, you know, what was said to be on the test, and I would just do that. I still have a, my second practical to take this class, and it's 
um, muscles, cranial nerves, neurons, peripheral nerves, and like sense organs. Um, I'm not really anticipating that I'm going to do like perfect on it, but at this point, you know, like I said earlier on in the video, it's mathematically impossible for me to get below an A, even if I get zeros on everything. Um, even if I get zeros on my last lecture exam, my final and my practical, I still get a 93 in the class. So I'm not worried. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so for some people, Picmonic will really help you out for um, your practical. If you've never heard of Picmonic before, it, it like, it's almost like a memory trick type website. A lot of people use it for nursing school, but they do have an anatomy and physiology like segment as well. And then some people find Quizlet helpful where, you know, if you look on like other people's Quizlets, <laughs> um, I did not make a single Quizlet for this class, but I would go off of other people's Quizlets. This way it's a lot less work that you have to do. So if you're able to find someone else's Quizlet that like pretty much matches up what you need to know, I would highly recommend that. Um, so Quizlet helped my other classmates a lot for studying for their practicals. So that is something that might work for you as well. Um, so that was pretty much everything that I did to get an A. Um, hopefully you found this information helpful. Um, if there's anything, if there's any one thing that I would stress the most, um, it would probably be gathering information from other resources and taking your own notes. Um, just because like I said, like this is the subject that everything, you know, not everything, but pretty much everything is going to build on in nursing school. So you really want to have a good grasp on anatomy and physiology. Yeah, that was what kept me motivated. I definitely had periods when I was just like, I want to give up. <laughs> like, you know, just, I want to like not do my work. I want to just do something else. I'm a little bit burnt out right now, but what got me through was really, it was remembering like hey like one day I'm gonna be in nursing school and this is gonna pay off like my my <laughs> hopefully it actually does but that's what I'm telling myself to get by you know like I'm gonna be in nursing school and I'm gonna be doing clinicals and I'm gonna need to know where certain things are I'm gonna need to know how the body works you know when it's in its healthy state um you know I'm taking pathophysiology for the spring semester so you know I'm gonna need to know <laughs> what it's actually talking about you know certain like disease mechanisms like i'm gonna need to know like what it affects and you know i'm gonna be like oh yeah i remember that anatomy when it it's supposed to work like this and like this is the physiology of xyz whatever so that helped motivate me it was like hey listen like you really need to know this um it might not seem super important right now maybe you know if i'm gonna be working in the NICU one day you know the aging process of an adult probably might not be the most relevant however it is going to be relevant when i'm in nursing school so i'm going to need to know it anyway um so yeah i i'm very tired oh and if you're wondering if this is it's a heart monitor um hopefully yeah hope just like ignore it um but yeah if you made it this far in the video thank you so so much for watching um and thank you for all of your support and encouragement it really does mean a lot to me and you really have like no idea um <laughs> so thank you for that um if you made it this far in the video thank you so so much for watching and i will see you next time